Hello, today we're talking about how to use Logic Apps to invoke Databricks workflows. This is in a environment where there's no networking security set up. Now, typically you would have your Databricks workspace in a front end private link. And in the next video, we'll talk about how to address that. So first I've got a table here. Let's just run it to make sure that the table is entirely empty. As you can see, the table's got a column name that says param1 and no rows. And then we have a very, very simple notebook that has a widget that let us pass in param1 in a string and then just insert that into the table that we just did select start from. So if we run this and leaving the param value as one, what you can see is a row has been inserted. If we go back and we run this again, you see that now there's a row in the table that has a value one. If we then go create a job, and this job has got one task, this task needs a name, and then the type is notebook sources workspace, will point it to the notebook that was created so this is a very simple one and then give it a cluster we need the parameter defined we need the parameter but leave that empty so on the task level the parameter one is pushed down from the job parameters so whatever you pass in as job parameters will overwrite the task parameters and this is what we have saved as a job and now what we need to do is to use logic apps to call this job api and pass in the parameters so here i am in the logic app ui and i have one trigger two actions the trigger is the http request i'll call the logic app api and trigger this workflow to run and then I'll give whoever is calling the API a response and then also use the HTTP action to call the Databricks workflow API. Now the trigger doesn't have to be a HTTP request. It can be something like Jira. Logic Apps has got loads and loads and loads of connectors that you can use, including Jira. Since I don't have a Jira instance, I will do this demo using Logic App API instead. So how to set this up is if you click into it, the method you want to choose is post, and then you want to choose a relative path. And it's basically just to click on advanced parameters and then give it a relative path for the parameter you want to pass the value in. And how to do this parameters is here. If you click on the parameters here, we've got a parameter underscore one, which we want to pass in using the API call. We've got the pet that will help Logic Apps to authenticate against Databricks, and then your Databricks workspace URL, as well as the job ID that you want to invoke. So in the next action is basically just return a 200 telling whoever is calling the API call that the call has been successful. And then we also want to return the value of the parameter that we passed in to say that you passed in this parameter, I'm going to use this parameter correctly. So how to do this is you can click on the insert expressions and in the dynamic content, you can scroll down under the one HTTP request is received, pick the param one relative path, and then it will be returning the value you passed in in the API call in the response to the API. In the HTTP bit, what you want to do is the Databricks workflow run now API call. And here you will need the workspace URL. How to call this is basically, again, insert dynamic content and then use a parameter. You also want to post, and here you want to authorize using the pad. And here we just saved a pad as a parameter 
for demonstration purposes in production environment you want to connect your logic apps with key vault and save your pet in the key vault and then use logic apps to get the pet from key vault and use it here but for simplicity purposes we'll just save pet as a parameter in logic apps itself for the demo and then in the body you want to pass in the job id as well as the parameter one. So now we have everything built. What we want to do is to copy this URL, go over to Postman, and then copy paste this in. But what we want to do is to change the value of the param into what we want. Since in the notebook, we used one as a value, here we'll just use two. And then we will send this. You can see that it returned hello too. So the API call was successful. And if we go back to the run history, you should see the last run is successful. Again, if we go back to the Databricks workspace and run this query again, you can see the two has been added to the table. Now, this is relatively simple because there's no networking components to it. If my Databricks workspace has got front-end private link set up, I'll do the same HTTP call to invoke the Databricks jobs API. What would happen is it will return a 403, which means it's forbidden. The Logic App IP is not allowed to access the REST API of Databricks Workspace. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to get around that. Thank you for watching Data Leaps. If you think the content is useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it.